My dear brothers and sisters, we were bestowed with a lot of resources. Muskeda, when we came up in 2005, voted for independence, we had oil. Resources that other countries don't have. What happened with these resources? Many people are poor today or rich. Where is the oil money? Who has taken them? What is the money used for? If I ask these questions, they say the bishop is talking politics. I'm talking like Prophet Amos. I'm asking that once God gives you blessings, he also gives you responsibilities. You must be responsible of God's blessings. Because he gives you blessings, he expects you to be responsible, to care for these blessings. Carelessness brings curse and brings suffering. The suffering of our country today is because of the carelessness of the leaders, whether the leaders of the church or the leaders of the country. We have been careless, and because of this carelessness, now there is suffering. According to Amos, according to Amos, the prophet, true health, the true health, the real health of a society cannot be measured merely by the terms of economic prosperity. We have seen it already. The health of the community, the health of the society is not only in economic prosperity, but must be assessed from the moral performance of the community, of the nation, the moral performance of the community. Our prosperity of having the oil was not enough. Our moral responsibility, our moral, moral responsibility has been weak. Why? That is why we are able to rape women and children. We rape them, our sisters, South Sudanese. This is a poor moral responsibility that we lost. We are able to kill our own brothers and sisters because of resources. Who gave those resources? Gone. A blessing that has turned into a curse. We became crazy. We start dividing ourselves into ethnic lines. We start dividing ourselves into political lines. And we start destroying our nation. According to Amos, justice in all forms is essential to the proper functioning of a society and is required by the way by God. If there is no justice in a society, in a community, then there is no social harmony, no peace. Why we are fighting today? Why there is war in the country today? Because there is injustice. And this has to be spelled out, injustice in capital letters. The perpetrators of social injustices sought to conceal sometimes their acts by hip hypocritical religious practices. They attend masses, they attend religious ceremonies, so that you look at them as pious people. This is what happened during the time of Prophet Amos. Those who perpetrate injustice, they always come to church. They sit in front line. They ask for choirs to go and sing in their families. They move with the Bible with the Sunday Missal, with the cross, and you think this is the man of God. Well, the very man, the very woman that is kneeling here, that is praying here, is going out there to commit very unjust, very unjust programs. In our days, you have seen it yourselves. I'm talking about the time of Prophet Amos. Huh? I did not yet come to us. This was during the time of Prophet Amos. The political leaders of Israel at that time, they do exactly what ours are doing today. They go to churches all over. And on Sunday, they don't stay at home. They go to every church. They even donate, by the way. And they donate some of that money that they have stolen from the poor, and they give it to the church. So that you see them as honest and good people. But at night, at dawn, what did they plan? Injustice. The social evil of Amos' time, 
are still experienced in our world today. That is why you are laughing. The issues addressed by Amos vividly shows themselves in our country today. What are these things? Corruption at the highest levels. Injustices at the highest level. Embezzlement at the highest level. Oppression of the poor at the highest level. Flight of the capital, including the bank reserves, at the highest level. These injustices account for the instability of our country. These are the things. The elite rich get richer at the expenses of the poor who continue to sink into abject poverty. The poorest person in the world is found in South Sudan. And one of the richest peoples are found in South Sudan. You can see the paradox. How did this man become so rich and another one become so poor? Even his grass house the grass house is touched. I want to explain this better. Somebody has a mansion, a building that is of multi-million in South Sudan. And a South Sudanese who has only a tukul, the tukul even soldiers are sent to burn that tukul. Well, what kind of country is this? What is happening? The poor is even made poor. He is deprived even of a grass house. Yeah, yeah. The elite prosper educationally. They educate their family members at the expenses of the nation. They build mansions with the stolen money. They pay unjust wages and continues the exploitation of the poor on the day-to-day -day basis. Do you know what happened? Somebody at grade 17, how much money is he receiving? You go to the market. Compare the money of somebody at grade 17 and the market of today. That money cannot feed this individual beside his family and children for one month. I'm not of grade 17, huh? but I know. What happened? The economy of the country is made so much in balance to suit the interests of the rich, of the few rich. Even if all of you die, Ali Kefa, he is happy. He has a house here, another house in Kampala, another house in Nairobi, another house in Addis Ababa, another house in Australia, another house in Canada, and another house in America. These people, during the time of Prophet Amos, they remain in power at all costs and leave their population in poverty. These people, according to Prophet Amos, should be condemned. And I take this opportunity to condemn them in the highest terms possible. Emo said, respect for the dignity of the people, for the dignity of the nation should be sought. St. Paul also today writes to Timothy, a bishop like myself. And he wrote to him, he said, my friend, Timothy was a bishop of Ephesus. He was warning him. He said, Bishop Timothy, be careful of false teachers taking up the ministry of preaching to spread doctrines that mislead the faithful, to lead them away from the truth. Be a religious, uphold to the truth, and be strong in faith. According to Paul, in Ephesus, the preachers were increasing and they start misleading the Christian community from the truth of the gospel. And if somebody is not founded, after getting this money from these guys, you become afraid to tell them that you are wrong. How many of our preachers today go to those palaces and bless these corrupt leaders? How many of them? Our people are suffering. There is no peace in the country. There is no freedom of speech. There is no freedom of movement. There is insecurity. Gali, we are in peace. The religious leader saying that, not you. Is it true that we are in peace? And yet this religious leader cannot go to Yei by himself. Radio Bekita.